Hey everybody, I'm Charlie Craven, and boy, I'm excited. Today I've got a treat for you. Uh, we are going to tie a San Juan worm. And I know that uh, most of you are like, hey, I already know how to tie a San Juan worm, and you probably do. But you know, when sometimes when people start, they don't know how to tie a San Juan worm. And uh, as simple a fly as this is, um, there's a few little tricks to it. Uh, now, I... Uh, I honestly, I'll be perfectly honest with you, I can't remember the last time I fished a regular salmon worm, but back in the day when I guided up in Cheeseman Canyon, uh, we fished salmon worms an awful lot. Um, and I tied a ton of them for shops. Um, you know, this was a good money fly, pretty quick and easy and uh, uh, cheap to tie. So um, I, uh, uh, over the years, sort of developed my way of doing it, and uh, I'll show you a few little kind of commercial tricks. Um, so I'm going to tie this on a 3761 size 14. It's a TMCO 3761 size 12 or 14. Either one of those is fine. Um, the hook size is not going to determine the fly size. Obviously, we're going to tie a worm that sticks out on either side. But um, I'm also going to tie it with uni six hot thread. Um, I'm going to tie a, a tan one, so I'm going to use pink thread for the little band in the middle. Um, and we've got some ultra chenille. Um, this is just worm brown. You can, uh, you know, again, whatever color. Red's a good one too. Um, now, one of the catches when you when you start to tie these is you can see when I pull a piece off of this card, um, it's got a corner um, every couple inches. Um, and what I have found over the years is rather than try to cut those all in singles, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this whole card of chenille. We're going to tie a whole bunch of worms. Um, and it's not like you use this stuff for a lot of other stuff. Um, and let me get where you can see where I'm at here. There we go. I'm going to take my scissors and slide it inside the card. Um, let me get it in here. There we go. Inside the card like so, and I'm going to cut right along the edge so that I've cut that, that whole edge. And then I'm going to come on the other side. This is my commercial tying tip for the day. Work my scissors in there and cut the other side. So now what I've got are two little stacks of chenille that's all cut to about the same length. Now, what you'll see, I'm going to grab just a smaller bunch of this to make this easier to manage. I'd usually do this whole thing at once, but I'm going to try to keep those even. But what you'll see is the corners are still left on some of those pieces. So what I want to do is come past the end of that corner, and I'll just cut all that off so they're all square on the ends. And then the same thing on this end, kind of go your shortest common denominator, but it should should remain about that same length. It's about the width of the card, and I'll cut all those off, like so. So I've got this neat little clump that's all cut to length. Now, as far as burning the ends, um, rather than sit and go through and burn each end of an order of a hundred dozen sand on worms, I figured out that if I take this and spread it out in my fingers like this, like a flower, and just get all those ends separated, like so. I can then come in with my lighter and singe the ends all at once. You can see I can maneuver that around and just taper those ends down, like so. And I'll reverse that clump, spread this end out, and come in and burn those ends. Now I'm not saying there might be one or two that you miss along the way, but that's much faster than doing them one at a time. So now I've got like 50 worm bodies there all wrapped up ready to go. Um, so that's the hard part. So when I keep this stack, I just put it right back in the bag. Um, you know, I'll prep all of it, burn all the ends, and then it's just ready to go for the next time I need to tie some worms. So there's a little speed tip for a salmon worm, as if you needed to make it faster. Um, you're talking to the right guy. I like fast. So now I'm, I've got my hook in the vise, I've got my 6 out unit thread, and I'm going to start this thread just up here behind the eye. I'm going to make a nice even thread base all the way back to the bend. And I want to cover the whole hook shank so that it's completely pink as I get all the way back there. Now one of the reasons I like this unit thread is it's polyester, so it doesn't have much stretch. Um, and it's going to cinch down nicely into this material. So I'm going to take a piece of my, my worm chenille. Um, let's see, yeah, we're just barely on the screen there, but I'm going to take a piece of my worm chenille and about, oh, let's say two shank lengths from the bend, or from the end, I'm going to bind this down with five or six tight turns stacked one right on top of each other right there at the bend. 
I'm going to lift the front end up and I'm going to run my thread nice and even again. All the way up to the hook eye and I'll lay that end down again and catch it there. Now some people will just whip finish right there and it probably works fine. I like to make a little band of thread. Um, this is that little little band that you see on a on a real worm. Um, it's not very wide but I like to make a little little bump there. Now I don't lift up and whip finish up here. Um, if you do you end up with this worm that's got this weird bright angle and it looks dumb. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to whip finish right over that band. I'll cinch that down and trim that out. You can see I was talking that still didn't take very long. Um, simple little buck. Um, now this is a fly that greatly benefits from some head cement. So I'm going to put some head cement on there right on that band. Go all the way around. If you're having a good day on fishing a worm, you know, this is anytime the water came up in Cheeseman Canyon, the worm was a killer. Um, but you can see I head cemented all of the thread across the bottom there. That really does make the fly a lot tougher. It just keeps that thread from getting abraded because it is exposed. And that is my quick commercial method uh, for tying a San Juan worm. I feel, like, I feel like you guys are off to the side a little bit here. Let's see if I can get you a little more centered here. Well, I guess you weren't that far off to the side, but um, at any rate, um, that is our little San Juan worm. Simple little bug might be your first fly. Um, it does catch fish like crazy. Um, don't be ashamed of using them. It's an actual uh, food source that's in the water that fish do key on. Uh, you know, red, tan, brown, purple, pink, orange. Uh, all of those are good colors. This this earthworm color with the pink band has been my favorite for years. Um, also, sometimes tie it with rusty brown thread. Uh, but that that it, there it is. You asked for it. Um, don't act like you weren't interested. You you got something out of that video. Even a lowly San Juan worm can teach you something. Um, so there you go. There's my gift to you for the day. Hope you guys have a good day. Thanks for watching. I'm Charlie Craven.